Hey there, this is Chad from Zombie Fight Shark. Welcome to episode six of our Europa Complete Walkthrough. And uh, we are we are to the fun stuff here. Um, the other stuff was interesting, but now this is where it gets fun, in my opinion. Um, we are to the wave section, which is one of the things that makes Europa unique and makes it different from, uh, at least for sure, other reason soft synths and um unique in in its own right in the world of soft soft synths real quick we'll talk about the basics here uh octave i think we know what octave does semitones same thing it does in pretty much everything else tune minus or plus 50 cents and then keyboard so very useful if you're making drums you want to turn keyboard all the way off so that pressing different notes doesn't give you different pitches so but for our purposes we're gonna leave keyboard on so now let's start talking about all of these wave options and in this episode we're just going to go through these there's because there's so many in the next episode we'll talk about the modifiers uh wave modifiers so um let's start at the top basic analog uh and then we'll it will demo what each of these other knobs does as we go uh let's see so we got like we're starting with a sine wave and shape sweeps through all of your shapes and so you can see here I have uh, I have my Melda oscilloscope which gives you a little bit more detail but we go from sine to square to sawtooth and, uh, and a little yeah, there we go a little bit of triangle wave there uh, and you can and you can see here my analyzer I got it going where it changes those harmonics um, so that shape knob is gonna be key when you're playing with wave every one of these you select you got to go through mm -hmm. shape and uh, in, a, in just a second, you'll see why it's so port important to go through them, other than what you just saw. Um, real quick, uh, this is, uh, in, in a previous episode, we touched on this when we talked about the filter. This is the basically the exact same idea as what's over here in the filter episode. You can, you can control you know, how much your envelope goes to the shape knob and, or LFO, how much it goes or velocity mod wheel key random and then you have inverted versions of all those same things um and uh if you if you missed the filter episode go check that one out because i go it fairly in depth into that uh and and how it all works um so so rather than repeat all that uh, you can just play with it and figure it out um and then velocity does the same thing that it does for filter over here um the harder you hit the key the more it affects whichever of these options you've selected to affect the shape so so before we do the waves let's look at this phase sync button forces the uh forces conformity for for is the easiest way i can say it uh, that every time you hit the note it's going to be the same uh and it keeps everything keeps it in phase um and that can matter when you've got multiple waves going at the same time uh, it's starting stuff at the zero point, and it, when you've got a bunch of waves, sometimes you can you can have points where uh, they don't re the notes don't react in the way you want them to in the time you want them to. Uh, so if you're playing, like say you create a lead, and you're like I'm you know I'm coming down on the one, and the one is off every time, or it's I seem to be missing notes, but I know I'm not missing notes. Try hitting that phase sync button and uh, and see if it fixes it. So now let's look, let's start looking at these waves because it's crazy. Um, all right, so basic analog, we know what it does. Square to ramp, I should, you can probably guess what happens here. Yeah. 
And I personally love how it draws the ramp. So we got half ramp, you know, half sawtooth, half square. All the way across, you know. Um, saw triangle, similar idea. Starts with a saw. Tur turns into a triangle. Comes back to a saw. There's our triangle there. Um, <clears throat> pulse width. So this, when I said a minute ago, this it's important to use shape every time because I'm playing and nothing's happening because pulse width, pulse width is set to zero. There is no width to it. So now, ah, there it is. Hooray. Noise. And then we've we've come to the opposite end of the pulse width where instead of being bottom it's stuck at the top game so if you like chip tunes like i do i wrote an album of chip tune or chip tune inspired tunes um So, yep, very chip tuny. And you can see as we're moving through shape how it's the harmonics are changing over here in our analyzer. Just selecting different harmonic sets as it goes uh, and kind of just different versions of uh, square wave or adding additional square wave. Uh, synced sign. Uh, oh, let's turn that LFO off. It's a regular sign. Yeah, and then easiest to watch the analyzer here. See, it's emphasizing the, just changing where the harp, the fundamental is emphasized. Performance sweep. Very similar idea, kind of adding and changing harmonics as it goes. Electromechanic. So that would be one if you're going to make, you want to make your own. Um, Rhodes type sound. Um, that's a good place to start. Vocal cord. Does it sound like a vocal cord? What do you think? Let's see, what if we put, I did this envelope here. Envelope one. Little bit, little bit. You can hear it's got like a subtle white noise in the background. Car plus strong. So this one I really like. And a little different because it starts with all the lots of harmonics, lots of noise. Uh, <clears throat> and it goes 
and your shape is, is eliminating them. But if you want to make a guitar sound, play with this for a few minutes because it can make a great, uh, a great faux guitar sound. Envelope 3-4. Envelope 3-4 is a little bit uh, unique um, and it's combining. So this is where you can draw your own sounds. Um, and so, so here's envelope 3, here's envelope 4, right? So envelope 3, boom, matches up there. Envelope 4, pow. Now envelope 4 matches what's here. And you could draw your own or you could use with presets, whatever, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Um, and it's a way to get, say, so it's just a way to create your own, uh, create your own, uh, wave shape there. And then you can play with it in all the same ways that, you could with the other stuff. Um, so let's see if I do uh, envelope one. So this envelope is going and then it's going between the two of those. So I think you get the idea there. Pretty neat. Uh, now we get into the FM ratios. Um, so this is this part's a little bit interesting. Um, you have so for FM ratio, you've got these all these different options, um, and so just uh, this this is again this is one of those easier to play with than is to to describe unless you just really grasp all this stuff in your head. Um, but, uh, so uh, from propeller heads, they, they say the modifiers let you frequency modulate the currently selected waveform at various ratios. Uh, like it shows right there. One to one, one to two, one to eight, two to one. Um, the carrier signal is the currently selected waveform and the modulator is the, modifier signal set the frequency modulation amount with the amount knob so i'm turning on modifier one so that's one to one now let's do one to two so pretty different result there. Um, one to eight. And this is going to be one that, you know, all these modifiers are going to affect it differently every time. So right now I've got it fold or it folds the waveform, but it's going to be different every time. Um, so then We've got two to one. I like how it uh, just starts to wah, 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 when you uh, fluctuate in that, in that little butter zone right there. I like that. I um, wonder if you can do something with that. If we take LFO1 and let's see, LFO1 to engine one mod amount and then turn it on yeah yeah you can get it to get it to do that um and Nice. 
nice ambient. You get the idea, you know. Um, fun, fun little thing that you could waste a good hour on. And then we've got uh, FM feedback. So let's go to that FM feedback. So an internally fed back sine wave at a one-to-one ratio modulates the waveform. Uh, so so it's, it's a one-to-one ratio, meaning whatever it's feeding back at the same, the carrier modulator is feeding back at the same ratio that the... Uh, that the wave actually is. So it's a sign, and then as we alter it, it's feeding back more, and more until it's just noise. Just for fun there, just wanted to see how that affected the sound. Uh, let's keep going. There's more noise, a bunch of different noises. So you got, you got your sample and hold right here. So you could definitely use that in some uh, chip y type stuff, Berlin noise. Nope, sorry, Berlin. Perlin noise. That's a P, not a B. So kind of a sign-based noise. Yeah, you can see how you have a lot of fun with that one. Uh, bit noise back to our uh, you know game you can hear it uh, if you were if you're a chiptune dude or gal FM FB noise so pure sine wave signal at zero percent fed back at a one-to-one -one ratio Sounds very familiar. Hmm. Yeah, curious. Sounds like the exact same thing. Uh, and then uh, freeze noise is the the next one, <clears throat> and last of the noises. Um, and if you, um, you know, you know, it goes pretty much to white noise as it as it modulates there. Um, but yeah, that freeze noise sounds very much to me like a lot of uh, IDM stuff uses that. You know, it's like a snare rush sound where it's just stuck on the fastest repeat on a button. Uh, then we got wavetables, like it just does not end. Um, so each of the wavetables has its own sound uh, that you can modulate in between. Um, and there's a cross-faded loop within each of these uh, that makes it sound smooth when you modulate between them. Um, but this is, this is yet another example of... Um, Mm -hmm. 
so uh, let's let's go through the wavetables here. And we'll take the LFO off. So if you if you're playing with this one, this is one that each one of these you can it's a world in and of itself. So alien bell, right? Let's let's just test that theory. Sounds like a bell. Sounds like pole position to me. Um, so, but everyone is kind of a microcosm, tiny waves. And bright harmonics. Makes me think of Boards of Canada. I mean that like that one is just crazy how different that is uh, as you sweep the through there. So yeah, just uh, universe within a universe here. Got some interesting stuff for sure. Um, chameleon, what else we got? Complex. Yeah, uh, I could fall down the rabbit hole. Doing all kinds of fun stuff. <clears throat> and this one was one of my favorites. Um just because of the name glitchy square and you can see the shape there uh and yeah it's a square and, and then it's got just a little notch chopped out of it there i mean and as you play with the shape you can see it like gets a little wonkier so i i like that it's got like a little bit of a randomization to it um phase folder starting starts with shape yeah, and we'll watch it go through those harmonics. So some of these you can you you create a lot of the same sounds with them, but um, as you continue to, you know, you're you're not going to use just one wave. That's why there's three engines and robot ramp. It starts as a ramp. That's a lot of stair steps. And then it's like a sine wave stair step, and then it starts to get a little wild after that. And then smooth to raw, smooth to raw. That would be a good one where you could combine um, two 
two instances of it. Get a fat bass going. You get the idea. Now we're back to our user wave. And so I don't have user wave selected. Um, so this is, these are toms inside the, um, yeah, let's do an 808 tom here. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's so it's kind of applying it with a sign. And let's apply that LFO back. So, you know, you can pick any wave, but you get kind of need to pick one that makes sense. So, um, let's see. Symbols. Yeah, deep down. So it's got a lot of harmonic content. So the uh, user wave and then user wave smooth, it kind of affects the same wave in a slightly different way. Um, let me try one more and see if I can get something good. Okay, this one's a longer sample. Let's see. make envelope one modulate engine one shape we do LFO. Uh, that was unexpected. So, you know, I guess that's, you know, that's the trick. And right now I've got it set to one voice. Whatever you select, you know, you're going to play with this LFO or play with, you know, your envelope or your LFO, send it over there uh, so that it's modulating the shape. And um, you might get some interesting sounds there. Um, that's interesting enough. Let's do one more. Uh, let's see. What's this? Okay. 
All right. So, uh, let's turn the reverb on. Big reverb, long decay. Got some pretty spooky sounds from uh, from that little sample. Uh, so uh, hopefully that gives you some ideas of some stuff to play with. And then we're going to talk about the wave modifier in the next episode. So uh, thanks for your eyes and ears on this one. Like and subscribe if you appreciate this content. And I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers. Cheers.